Greetings friends. In previous videos I've discussed the problems of social media, the narcissism, the shallowness, the superficiality, the fact that you can't get good, you don't see good content on social media. When I go to my Facebook account, uh, there's, I mean, I don't mean to play myself up here, but there's no one doing anything like there's no one po posting any videos of themselves talking unless they're at a restaurant or doing something. To, I don't know because I've disabled all them. But anyways, I don't want to get back into uh, talking about social media. I want to just shift the discussion to the internet in general and, and YouTube videos, news, just generally like reading articles or, or watching videos, um, maybe reading blogs. I don't really read blogs, but I guess you could, you could include that as well. And I just think that obviously there's an addiction we have in our time to the internet. I, I suffer from this addiction to some extent, I think I have it uh, pretty much under control. I, I unplug, but um, being a, a content creator, you know, I spend more time, a lot of time on the internet and, uh, you know, content creating itself, that can be kind of addictive too. If you want to produce a good video at least once a week, that takes time and you can get carried away with it. It, it, it can be exhilarating at the same time as it can be slowly draining you. You might not notice that it's draining you. So you may not all be content creators, but I think it's as, as a, someone who uh, likes to watch videos, likes to read stuff online, it's a similar feeling. It, it, it can be exhilarating, stimulating, and you want to keep going. And then they have all these suggestions to continue. So you keep going and the, the time can fly by. And then sometimes I even find myself clicking on stuff that I know is going to be dumb but I click on it anyways, and I'm watching this stuff. And, uh, uh, you know, sometimes it does satisfy that entertainment it, or, or, or not. But it often is very entertaining or, or it can be funny. I mean, anything really like seeing an animal at attacks or or uh, or just dumb stuff or, or uh, you know, paranormal stuff or, uh, you know. But then, yeah, there's stuff that I'm, I'm watching and I'm thinking, why am I even watching this? I should I should just get off right now. But then, of course, you watch a few more minutes, it goes by and, and unclick. I mean, it, it's it's uh, like Facebook, they admitted and maybe maybe Twitter, too. But, you know, they they admitted that it was on purpose designed to manipulate the emotions of humans to operate on a subconscious level. That's going on, on in the Internet in, in general. Right. And so, like I said, I'm not perfect and uh, because I have an active mind in general. And that's that's a blessing and a curse because and I don't sleep very well. I mean, I, I sleep better uh, these days, but I have to give myself more time to I, I can't just hit the pillow and fall asleep. Generally, it takes me at least 45 minutes to fall asleep. Sometimes it can take me hours. But I feel if you're still lying in bed and you're you're deep breathing, then you'll still feel rested in the morning. Thankfully, at least I will. Um, but yeah, uh, it's that's that's having an active mind. That's that's what it's like. And uh, very cre cre creativity can be painful. Sometimes thoughts come to me all at once. They come at inconvenient times. So then, so and then you want to write them all. I want to write them all down on on notes. I'm sorry, I'm getting kind of off topic. It's all about inf information, this flow of information, and um, I want to write down. I want to write down these these things. They might come all. They might not. You know, all these ideas. I have all these all these different ideas. I don't see. I don't see the point in uh, in sharing them all with you here. It would just be a long list, a stream of consciousness of good points. But then I, I think, yeah, that's a good point. But then I might not pursue that into a video because then I'll think about it later. It's like, well, maybe there's not really much to say about that or maybe there is or but, you know, it's too much effort right now or, you know, a long, long list of uh, long list of things. And and uh, that keeps the mind active. That can be uh, satisfying. It, it, it can it can really it can even boost happiness because now you have a goal like, yeah, I'm going to explore that. I'm going to develop that idea. But at the same time, it can be draining you without you being consciously aware. This is something I've suffered from being drained by uh, mental and physical effort without me being aware. And, and that can weaken certain organs in your body. It can, it can weaken your general stamina. It can cause uh, health problems. 
that you may that otherwise you may feel fine and then this, so I'm, I'm you know i'm learning to to balance this out but luckily i don't have you know i mean obviously the youtube thing content creation that's one thing but uh you can take sometimes i learn to you know take that more at my own pace that's why i don't put out so many videos but uh i also learned to tone, tone down the, the uh, consumption of all this information uh sometimes i just switch to doing you know other creative activities so when you could argue well then that's that's just draining you uh just the same but something about being being a creative activity is a bit different it can also drain you but i, I uh it can be a quieter activity i don't have to have the internet on i can just be in, in my office here uh, just maybe thinking in the afternoon writing writing down thoughts and yeah and let it let a day go by or even two days go by where i didn't watch any youtube videos and i have all these like favorite content creators but you know it just a list it just becomes a list of people and then you know it, it's it's very i I'm, I'm not i can't do it and and no one can really produce uh new content i mean i probably repeat myself and i tried to say different things but you know most of us once you get to know us we're going to be saying similar things and maybe maybe you like a certain personality but you, you tune into them and you know people tend to ramble it can be like a radio personality like a talk like a talk personality or it can be political stuff it can be comedy migtow stuff whatever uh people tend to repeat philosophies they repeat ideas you know they tell you similar stories or the same story again and again maybe a different take on it a different take on it here it's very hard and i think we all know this deep down we all know that yeah we're getting we're, we're getting that product that, that we, we we like this product so we're going to come back to that and maybe we'll learn something new but we want to come back to that product but then there i mean i mean maybe you'll get tired of me no oh, this free thinker silver guy he's you know he's getting and I can't blame you because you know, I, I, you know, we're all human. What what can we do? We're we're not uh, we're not so special. We're gonna repeat ourselves. You you probably get bored after a while, or I'll be talking about just something different. People move on and talk about different things, and be like, well, I don't want to, I don't need to follow this content creator anymore because they're. Or just, even sometimes people might just subscribe to something just uh, so they like kind of like a bookmark. It's a bookmark. And I won't I won't lose this guy. I can come back to him, but they're not really interested in probably watching many of your videos or going into the the database but which is fine you know that's that's just normal so i'm just saying there's this you can't you it's this constant searching on the internet for this gratification relatively instantly and i think in previous times in the history humans weren't necessarily better but they didn't have that instant gratification available so it forced them to develop more of an inner peace an inner tranquility where things were much more bare and base and imagine trying to study by candlelight um and so that brings us to books i mean books i guess that can be just as stimulating and, and draining as watching videos i think there are some differences like a, a book is not making noise it's quiet it's more peaceful on the other hand it it, it takes a bit more, I think, effort to read a book. You have to be focusing on the paragraphs line by line. A little bit more effort than just laying back and listening to a video. Now, I guess it depends on the ideas in the video, if you have to understand them. And I don't know. This is interesting. This is taking us into the realm of intellectual, like, like not ideas, but the actual process of thoughts and... Um, yeah, it's, it's. I don't know. My, I'm not a neurologist, so, and you know, different parts of your brain light up at certain times when you're dealing with certain concepts. So I, I guess it can be similar, but I, I it's a bit more st strenuous, I think, uh, to read a book, on average. Um, but at the same time, the book is quiet. There's this one-on-one -on -one relation. You're not really expecting this complete instant you're not really expecting this complete instant gratification with the book because you know it's a long call and i like to finish books and i'm not a fast reader partic i could be a fast reader if i really train myself to but i just have never really 
Because then again, if you just speed reading through something, then you lose part of the savoring. I like to savor the book. I like to, I, I don't like the idea of reading uh, a whole book, like like part of a book and, and leaving it unfinished. Even if I don't really, even if I'm getting bored with the book, I'll usually finish it. Even if I come back to it over months, I might take even up to a year to finish a book, just reading bits of it here and there. I actually take uh, books with me pretty much wherever I go. Like if I'm going on the subway or on the bus, I'll take a book with me. I may not read it, but I like to know that the book is there in case I decide to start reading. And usually at some point I do start reading. Yeah, people have suffered from real conditions with addiction to information. And um, I don't know, I don't have smartphones. I don't have internet on my phone, so I don't have a smartphone addiction. Um, I, I rarely send te text messages these days, uh, you know, just sometimes to my close friends. But uh, we don't really even have real much conversations. Uh, sometimes my friend Paul in Ghana, you know, we can text. Uh, but, you know, it's nothing. It's not a normal. It's not such a day. It's not even necessarily a daily uh, thing for me to send or receive a, a text or even to see any of my friends. I might not see my friends for a matter of days or even a week might might go by when you're more of a solitary person it it, it becomes easier to fall into the addiction of information consumption right because it's you've got the internet i have the you know i have my computer here so i can can obviously uh, uh you know watch a lot of videos that way and when i said articles i don't really read that many articles now because obviously that's more of the mainstream news but there might be other cases you might want to read some Wikipedia articles, you just want to know about something generally or reading some website. Um, yeah, so obviously, you know, articles, you know, sometimes you can still read the mainstream news, you just can't trust it too much. So I still might, go, you know, browse through some sites just to get a sense of what's going on in the world. I think probably humans in the past were more mature in the sense that they, they had to be. They, they couldn't get this instant gratification. And... Um, they also live their lives more according to the sun, the rising, the rising and the setting of the sun. When the sun is going down, that really affects what you can do. You have to get close to your home and it could be very dangerous to be caught outside and you just have to rely on a fire or maybe an oil lamp or, ga or maybe later a gas light, but basically candles for a long time. And that could be dangerous. That could set your house on fire, so you have to be more careful, but... You know, there's an in, there was an intimacy there. It was kind of a cool. I'm not saying. I guess I shouldn't be so. You know, I, I'm not saying nostalgic because I. I'm, you can't be nostalgic for something you never lived through. But romant. I guess the word would be. Uh, I'm romanticizing it. Because no, we don't really we don't want to be living in the 19th century. Uh, there were certain as there were positive aspects though that we can recognize. But no, we don't. Hopefully, we don't want to go back. Uh, to those times. Yeah, I mean, everyone basically has their own message, their own vibe, and you, you come you come back to them to get the familiar product, right? So Stix Hexenhammer666 is a, is a quality YouTuber. He puts out a, a lot of content for more than 10 years. The occult, politics, political analysis is mo mostly what he does. And uh, I, I followed him a lot. I don't really watch him... So I, I still tune in for a little bit, but not as often as I used to. Um, be, you know, his he, he points out a lot of good stuff, and uh, I, uh, basically, like uh, like like sticks. I, I think the major the mainstream media is is totally uh, you know abusing their power, and then they they shouldn't even have jobs. They should be out of a job, and uh, the stuff they, they they say about Trump is. Is unacceptable. It makes you want to support Trump. So, the problem is that I'm not. I'm not. I mean, maybe it's because I'm a Canadian. I don't know. But we all like to watch the U.S. just like the whole Western world does. Um, but I, I can't. What on sticks is in his comment section. I mean, it's so big. He's got such a large following now. But it's just a big echo chamber. So that's the other thing with this. Uh, this instant gratification is. You see it in these echo chambers and i mean i'm not i'm not singling out sticks i mean they, you could you could find this in really it's just, just it's a normal social phenomenon so maybe i shouldn't really be criticizing it but 
and just uh, Sticks is irresponsible when he talks about the economy. I've pointed this out in a video titled uh, Sticks, Sticks doesn't do his homework on the economy. So I'll, I'll leave a link to that. And uh, I, I'd like to believe that Trump is making the economy great, but like, he, can you be more specific? Can you can you show me the real evidence? Do you really just believe these these blanket statements that are released? Like everything's great, and yeah, it's it's like uh, whereas like suddenly it was a bubble before, but now everything's great, and um, so people just lap it up in these comment sections. They're just like they're just like uh, buzzing and and and. And, uh, you know, just they're ex they're exuberant and and it's like because it's true, like the, the, the left they just hate Trump. And so obviously, you know, if that hate is real, then clearly Trump must be telling the truth when he says the economy is great. Right. But but I mean, I, I don't see how they fall into this sort of echo chamber. Like, really? You, now you've made up your mind that you want. Now you got the pause. You got a plus. You got points up you got you got like ding, ding like it, it's like when you're ch ch tuning into uh to trump i oh, know what am i saying tuning into to sticks and you're getting that that gratification like yeah yeah my group here it's like we're doing we're making america great again and it's like i i just sit on the fence and i'm just like i think you guys are just partisans <laughs> you guys aren't being very diligent you guys aren't really looking at what's going on in america and I'm all for Trump. I like his personality. I wish him all the best and seems to be getting at least he's getting immigration in the right direction, I think. Um, uh, but the economy is uh, not getting better and not when you have a 21 trillion dollar debt. But, you know, I'm going off topic here. I'm going on, off into politics here. I was trying to keep this focus to, you know, this sort of psychological aspect, this addiction to information, instant gratification uh, of our internet age so for the generation xers that's cool very cool time very amazing music they didn't grow up with the internet jesus i was just listening to jesus and mary chain today some songs uh Bauhaus or Bauhaus, however you pronounce that uh and what else uh yeah alice in chains listening to the rooster you know that's an amazing song all these 80s and 90s bands the best music and it's sad that i try to tune into good music from from today and i don't even know what to look for maybe it's because i'm a i'm not in my teens anymore but i don't know what kids listen to uh these days but you know part of it's that the generation x generation was more creative more resourceful they that's why they could produce a better music because they were left to their own they weren't plugged in at such an early age i mean internet didn't come around until they were already in their their 20s in most cases or, or, or older and uh, part of the other aspect is that white culture has been more uh, flooded by other other groups in america and, and and rock rock is dead because white culture has been completely flooded and rock music uh it, you know, they say it came out of black music. Yeah, I guess sort of. But I mean, it was essentially it's a white cultural phenomenon from America, from the West, from Britain to an extent as well. And uh, and that's all been flooded right now. So you're seeing you're seeing a cultural disruption. And it's, that's why it's sad, because I know we must still have the ability to produce good music now. And that's different because you can just sort of chill out with music. It's not the same thing as consuming information. You're not, you're not thinking so hard. You're just listening to it. So it is a little different to just listen to music when you got a playlist or an album or something like that. Um, but I just, but part of the problem is you have to select each song. Usually, you know, to find a good playlist that that can be difficult. And you know, Billy Corgan pointed out that it, you know, in his interview with uh, when he was being interviewed by Joe Rogan that. Basically, uh, it's like in the old days before the internet, you had to listen to the whole album and that forced you to appraise the quality of the album. Does this actually sound good? Do, the, do these guys, do they earn the, you know, that I should keep paying them to get more albums? And the, the act of uh, scrutinizing it actually uh, makes you form a bond with the artist if they deliver if you say yeah well yeah this actually is good then you form more of a lifetime bond 
and you'll come back and buy more of their albums in the future. But the internet, Napster and all that, all those developments that broke that chain. Whereas now we just want the instant gratification of this song, uh, stream it right now. And I'm not saying there's necessarily that's bad. I mean, that was kind of just the way of things. Maybe there'll be some way of going, changing things in the future. I don't know, maybe in a positive way. I haven't thought too much about that. But, but he, he had a good point, Billy Corgan. And uh, I don't know what he's making some new music now. The Smashing Pumpkins, they were all right. They weren't really my favorite bands. They, they had some good songs, but overall their band, their albums were kind of weird. A book is just like a, a nourishing thing. Like uh, I'm still slowly working my way through uh, Martin Luther selections from his writings. I'm, I'm on like, I'm almost 400 pages in, uh, have about 100 more to go. And it's like, you know, I, I'm glad I, I picked out that book. I had a good feel about it. It worked out well. It's like you're eating a meal slowly. You don't have to necessarily speed read something and just get it done. Sometimes that you have the wrong attitude because you go, I got to get this done. I got to then And then you're on to the next thing. It's like take your time with it and like allow yourself to digest the book over time. And you slowly, I mean, it depends if you got a good book. You have to get something important from history. See, the good thing about books, books, books were always an optimistic, empowering thing for me from a young age, from when I was in, in from when I was a teenager and, and started to realize that I like books and history and reading. And then so in our in our confused millennial times when it's like what am i going to do with my life how am i going to fit into this world i don't want to work at mcdonald's i i'm i'm not an engineer i'm not a technical person i'm not i'm not going to go to a trade school and uh, what am i going to do so books were always there because it was always like look no matter what happens if you're at a loss for what to do economically i'm not saying then just waste your time on books because that's not going to make you money. But in a more deeper sense, a sp almost a spiritual sense, it's like, don't worry. There is always knowledge, real, real knowledge. And I know there's people who say, we don't know nothing. We don't know anything, man. It's all just, you know, I, oh man, there's, there's this YouTube channel called, I think it's called The Crow House. And he likes to talk about how there, were, there could have been this mud flood in Europe that, that uh, so that a thousand years of our, has been added on to history because of this mud flood. It set everything back and he, he's, he doesn't know if it's for a real thing, but he's pointing, putting it. And I mean, it's like, yeah, that could be true, but I mean, and he's a smart guy, so I'm not discounting his idea, but that sort of thinking is often what what lazy people who don't go they don't go read all, all these books it's almost like an easy thing to say yeah it's all it's just we don't we know we don't know anything but they don't read all these books and and uh so i think that at least you have the sense that there is some truth in the world there is this real thing called history you can get a sense of the deep questions you can get a a better sense of uh, who we are, where, where we came from, or where we may be going. You may not be fully satisfied, but you can get in that direction. And, and books are there from history. And it's almost like an intimate, maybe intimate's the wrong word, but a personal encounter with a personality. You and them, it's like I can see Luther, I can hear him. I imagine what he must look like. I mean, of course, they don't really know, but it's this... It's like there he is writing in his study this in the 16th century and you're just listening to his words from 500, 500 years later and it's like this man's alive in his words and that you could say that about many other writers. I'm just using that as an example because that's who I happen to be reading uh, at the moment. I'm reading some other books too. I'm reading a history also of the... Uh, the uh, what's what? Well, here it is. Uh, the, de the Dead Hand. Dead Hand... Uh, the, sorry, it's got a sticker here. Everything. The Untold Story of the Cold War Arms Race and its uh, Dangerous Legacy. This was a used, you know, I get used books because it's cheap. It's good in good condition. From it came out about 10 years. A fascinating read. It got the pul winner of the Pulitzer Prize. I'm just about uh, 50 pages in. It's, it's fascinating that the Soviets, they also had an anthrax program in addition to nuclear weapons, which they didn't let the West know about. But, you know, that's just a little thing about the book. Yeah, when you're with a book, it's just this 
this more calmer experience it, it doesn't need to be so drained i guess it can be you can get addicted to reading a book too so it's not entirely different but you know it, it's it's more of that focus because it's not like the video where you can just sit back listen and it's going to keep playing it's it's more of an you do that when you're in a quiet place right you can be listening to your video when you've got headphones on you're in a busy place but generally read a book you want to be in a quiet well no that's not necessarily true people people read books in all sorts of noisy places but ideally you want to be in you know a quiet place the book is the book is quiet the book is not talking and and books are never going to go away they've been saying for years that books will disappear They'll be replaced by computer screens. and uh, But I think we already realize that that's not happening. It's not, not ever going to happen. Um, they may continue to be displaced, um, but they're never going to completely go away. And any group of people, any, any powerful or wealthy person, any government, any spiritual organization, anyone who really wants to preserve some knowledge... They're never going to just want to leave it all in an electronic form. Deep down, everyone knows that they would, you would want it in, in a, on paper. And probably if it was really important, you would want it on, in stone. And hence what we see from ancient history. It's not a coincidence that you know, just because they... What am I saying? Just because they had stone tablets doesn't mean they were... Uh, necessarily primitive they could have had all sorts of other technology but what we what is left to us is the stone tablets which survive for example from ancient sumeria well those were clay tablets but you know same idea too much internet is also depressing and i mean i guess it depends on what sort of stuff you listen to but you know mostly on youtube it tends to be on the right people more tend to be not so uh not so to the progressive sort of mindset in general so if that's the case you we get bombarded by censorship it's coming oh the left is doing all these bad things antifa is doing all these bad things everything's bad 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 european union's bad and uh, it's a spider uh clamping down on us and uh it's like they make a pretty good argument that that's the case this is probably happening but it's continually reinforced everyone <laughs> like if you follow someone like oh uh, computing forever. Sometimes I call computing forever okay computer, like the Radiohead album. But anyways, uh, computing forever. Yeah, he'll follow the same stuff that Sargon follow. You know, similar. Sticks Hex and Emmer similar. It's Paul Joseph Watson similar. Stefan Molyneux. It's like very negative stuff. It's just hearing how all the political situation is so tense and Trump's doing well, but all these bad storm clouds are gathering and there's. And then there's the censorship. It's like, oh, my, my YouTube channel could be censored because they're just social justice warriors. And, and uh, I may as well just accept that my YouTube channel is going to be terminated and I have to start opening up accounts with BitChute and all these other uh, websites because it's just these, it's this cens censorship and all, this, all the politics is so depressing and then reading the mainstream news is just as depressing and then, then you start realizing how they're mind controlled because then the people might you might like who aren't mind controlled are giving you depressing information and then the people who who aren't giving you this the real information they could still be giving you depressing information and they're mind controlled or they're at least trying to mind control you because they're the mainstream lamestream news right not that I really watch them anymore. Not, not that I have a television. Do you have a television? So yeah, I think I'm going to wrap up this video. Maybe go for a walk, you know, while the sun's still up. Maybe smoke a little more. Not too much, just a little bit. No, I don't try to... I don't drink caffeine anymore. I haven't drank any caffeine for months and months. Months and months. I don't need caffeine anymore. I just stopped drinking it. It was recommended to me by by my acupuncturist and, and uh, I said all right and uh yeah you know what you don't need caffeine because you can get that energy just after two weeks or three weeks your body will naturally wake you up if you get enough sleep I've changed a lot of stuff in my life I mean going to bed at like 10 30 p.m recently extremely early getting up at uh eight o'clock in the morning yeah 
for me no more caffeine that's all that's all good and uh what i try to do but you know because i've talked about my overactive mind i try to avoid situations where my mind is too active and then i just go straight to bed because then i'm gonna lie there a lot longer just active thinking creative thinking about what am i going to do tomorrow what's my plan what's my intellectual plan what else is going on a good feeling but too stimulating not good and then in the morning you might i might feel uh you know overexerted and the thing that i try to do is leave some time in the dark to unplug in the darkness I like to be a little high not not too stoned because then, you know, being too stoned, that can make your mind too... I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of weed. If it's the kind of weed, I forget, the one that makes your uh, your mind more active, that's not good. But, but either way, you know, like, look, I'm not saying weed is good or bad. I'm just, it's, it's, that's, my, that's my one thing. That's the one thing I do. I do not drink alcohol. I do not, I almost never smoke cigarettes. I don't buy cigarettes. Sometimes someone might offer, it's been a long time since I smoked one, but. And, uh, but you know, no alcohol, no caffeine, but weed is my one thing. I try to eat healthy, but everything is a drug in life anyways. But anyways, uh, lying there in bed with the lights off and it's really cool, especially when you turn the lights off right away, then your eyes have not yet adjusted to the darkness. And then you're really in space, you know, figuratively, imaginatively, you're in space and the darkness is just as full of light as the broad daylight is. It's just a different kind of light than all these other things. And of course, you could be deep breathing then. You could be thinking, of course, trying to calm the mind. So maybe thinking is not always the best option, but it's a good way to just unplug from everything, to leave yourself that time at least 20 minutes, preferably at least 30 minutes alone in the darkness before you actually lay down. To go to sleep. That's what I like to do. Ideally, I try to do that. Hasta luego, amigos.